Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Inept General bringing you another Total War Warhammer Legendary Lord lore video. And this time we are looking at Karadrian, the captain of the Phoenix Guard. Now, this has been taken mainly from a video I did on the missing Legendary Lords of the High Elves. So if you've seen that video, do feel free to give this one a skip. But if you haven't, please do sit back and enjoy. Karadrian. Now, Karadrian started off life as a even conceited for a high elf noble. He was up there, you know, eating grapes on a chaise lounge all day, just having a great time, being just a right royal prick in everyday life, ongoing and continuous. One of the most conceited elves to ever walk the island of Alfwan, and that really is saying something. It got to the point where even his own family looked for ways they could disown him or get rid of him, but they were such sort of staunch traditionalists that they never really built up the courage to do it. So, one day this conceited prince goes off and does the pilgrimage that all elven nobility are expected to do, and that is to go to the shrine of Assyrian. Now, this is where the Phoenix King is coronated, walks through the flames of Assyrian, but, you know, everyone's meant to go and have a look at it. He's off to do this, and in his most conceited, kind of arrogant, sort of lack of respect act ever, he sneaks off from the tour group and goes into what is known as the Chamber of Days, one of the most holy places within the Shrine of Assyrian, reserved really for the Phoenix Guard. It's a place where you can see the future, a sort of past, present, future, all things around you, and it's what Phoenix Guard do, and then they walk out and take their vow of silence, promising never to speak of the things they've seen. So he goes into this room and it locks behind him, and basically he disappears for a number of days. People are kind of concerned. They kind of know where he is. They're like, oh, he's going to face harsh punishment. But he walks out with the mark of Assyrian branded into his forehead, marking him as a servant of the god of the elves. So he walks out, immediately gives up all his worldly possessions, just like, nope, take it off me. I don't want my title. I don't want anything from this mortal coil anymore. And then takes the vows to become a phoenix guard and hasn't spoken a word since that. That day. So as a Phoenix Guard, he served honorably, going to the battlefields that they were summoned to, carrying out his meditative responsibilities, thinking on the word of Assyrian. Almost a priestly knight, really, is how the Phoenix Guards operate. During the battle of the Phanuvial Plain, where Tyrion and Teclis saved the island of Ulfwan from a dark elf invasion, there was a battle in which Caradrian was involved. And he was there fighting on the battlefield when suddenly he saw a Frostheart Phoenix tumble out of the sky, having done battle with a fierce black dragon. He came to the Phoenix's aid and fought off single-handedly the Dark Elves looking to murder the fallen Phoenix. Ever since then, the Phoenix and Caradrian have been firm friends, and in fact, the Phoenix was one known as Ashtari. Now, Ashtari is now thought to be the oldest and wisest of all the Phoenixes, but ever since that day at the Battle of Phanuvial Plains, in the year 2302 of the Imperial Calendar, so some 200 years before the current Total War Warhammer timeline, they have been firm friends, and he has had Ashtari as a mount ever since. Then, sometime after the Battle of Phanuvial Plains, there was messages sent down to the Phoenix Guard that the current captain should kind of step aside, and it was the time of Caradrian to come forward and become the captain of the Phoenix Guard. He spends most of his days sort of looking in the Chamber of Time I'm reading the fiery letters of the god Assyrian, seeing the future, seeing the present, observing all things. But it's kind of hinted at that there is some degree of interpretation in the future predictions in the Chamber of Days, where it takes a keen mind to make the most sense out of it. And it's thought his gift for perception has made him have much more accurate readings. And as such, really it was one of the factors in placing him as captain of the Phoenix Guard, because he has this gift of being able to interpret the ways that the Phoenix Guard tell the future in a much more accurate and concise way. Apart from whiling away his days meditating in the Chamber of Days, he also is sometimes found just staring for hours out from the tallest battlement at the Shrine of Assyrian, just observing all the known world, kind of taking it in, 
in, everything he's seeing all at once, and he's just looking out for opportunities to be of use to serve the god Assyrian. His next big sort of campaign sortie was in the year 2399 of the Imperial Calendar, and at this time, a Skaven fleet of submersibles had gone past the gates of Lafern and made it into the inner sea of Ulfwan. They made landfall on the shores of Etain, and the Skaven horde packed into those ships poured out onto the shores of Ulfwan, and they were met with an army of Sea Guard. Now, the Sea Guard just started firing arrows, all completely disciplined, holding off the Skaven hordes with their spears and bows. However, the Skaven are wily little creatures, and they were not sending their best first. They had sent six huge waves of Skaven slaves ahead of their main forces, and indeed, it had done its job. Most of the Skaven slaves had taken the arrow fire from the Sea Guard, and their quivers were running extremely low by the time the storm vermin and rat ogres of the ships began to pour forth onto the battlefield coming at them. Now, the island was in a huge amount of calamity. If the Skaven managed to break out and make it into the hills of Ulfwan, Ulfwan would be forever tainted with a Skaven infestation. They'd never be able to get rid of them. They would have to stop them here and now. And so, it was Caradrian who saw this from the battlements of the Shrine of Assyrian, and in a rush, gathered forth as many of the available Phoenix Guard as he could, and the Phoenixes of the flame spires near the shrine itself. Now, why he didn't see this coming in pre-plan and already be there waiting, never really explained, but he prepares for battle and they fly across. The Phoenix Guard got six man on a Phoenix as they flew across the ocean to go and help out the Sea Guard in their defense of their beloved homeland. Meanwhile, in the battlefield itself, the Sea Guard had actually managed to kill the warlord of the Skaven by the name of Shiscratch of Clan Rictus. Now, he was taken out and they thought, okay, they're going to break now and we can just chase them down. But no, suddenly this chittering started. And it got su such a high decibel that some of the elves were sure there was some kind of vengeful chanting on behalf of these filthy skaven as they with renewed vigor charged up the beach, seemingly in revenge for their lost warlord. Now, this would be a very rare behavior for the skaven. I'm pretty sure it more had to do with the fear of how their masters would greet them if they were treated from the battlefield and back to the ships. But anyway, the Skaven renew their charge and the Sea Guards start taking heavy losses. It's it. The line is about to break. And just then, Phoenixes aflame come screeching out the sky, their talons tearing huge rows out of the Skaven backline, completely decimating their number. The sheer weight of the horde against the shields of the Sea Guard began to give way as the Phoenixes began to claw and claw more of the Skaven and horde away, tossing them into the air, slashing them open with their talons, setting them on fire with their flames. And so the Sea Guard were able to push the Skaven off and begin their own march down the beach. Now, a sudden roar from the back of the Skaven horde was heard as a huge Skaven abomination came trudging up the beach towards the Sea Guard. This would not be a threat easily dealt with. That is when and Caradrin, on top of Ashtari, came swooping out the sky to be involved in the battle themselves. First to strike was his trusted phoenix, digging its talons into the flesh of this monstrosity, tearing away at it, and in its place leaving blistering skin being burnt from the sheer cold of the ancient Frostheart phoenix. Next, Ashtari swooped back around on itself and went low, so that Caradrian could use the phoenix blade, his sword he'd been awarded as captain of the Phoenix Guard to carve slashes into the beast, causing its blood to boil and its flesh to set alight. After half a dozen slashes and passes with his mighty Phoenix, the whole abomination was just a mighty pillar of burning flesh as it succumbed to its choked screams and collapsed on the battlefield. Having seen this monstrous display of power was enough for the Skaven and they broke back to their ships. 
but the captain of the Phoenix Guard was too wise to what might happen, and before he'd arrived at the battlefield, had split his forces into two, with half of the Phoenixes and Phoenix Guard sent to destroy the ships that the Skaven had arrived in. And so trapped between two forces now, the Skaven began to get massacred. Late reinforcements from the City of the Fern came on cavalry and helped to ride down every last Skaven that landed on the beach that day. Although Foresight wasn't his best weapon that day, he was able to see in the present that the island of Ulfwan was at risk and ride to the rescue on board his trusted Phoenix. In terms of his rules on the tabletop, like all Phoenix Guard, he causes fear amongst his enemies because he's quiet. Yep. And uh, he also has, as I mentioned, the mark of a Syrian on his forehead. And the idea of that is that when an enemy kills him which you know how, how often can that really be useful in in sort of a larger context but the way it would probably work in total war warhammer would be that in the tabletop if you killed him you would suffer wounds to yourself it would work not unlike the curse of the tomb kings in total war warhammer where i'm sure if you got him like below 50 percent health he'd start to do damage to everyone in a radius around him or all the enemies in a radius around him it'd be very similar to that he also has the Phoenix Blade, which has been passed down from captain to captain of the Phoenix Guard, and that gives plus one strength on the tabletop and flame damage, but also causes D3 wounds. Now, in terms of translation to Total War Warhammer, probably see increased weapon strength, flaming damage, of course, and really the D3 wounds just equate to a higher weapon strength as well. It'd be along those lines. The fact he rides as a mount, his Frostheart Phoenix, you'd get all the cold attributes that they've been given in the Total War Warhammer game. That would be how he'd probably be translated in the game if we ever get to see him. So that's about it for Caradrian. As always, guys, a huge thank you for watching. Uh, do stay tuned to the channel for more Total War Warhammer lore. And uh, yeah, thanks again, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, guys, bye.